Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Scepter C27. And if at any point during the video, if you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys, but let's jump into the unboxing. All right, this is a pretty new monitor from Scepter. Let's get this thing unboxed. It is 1440p, 27 inches, 165 hertz, and I think it's got somewhere around 400 nits. Let's open this thing up. Right now this opens from the top, pull those tabs off, and then it opens from the top. There it is, Scepter always does a great job packaging their monitors. All right, pulling it out. It's basically sandwiched in between two pieces of styrofoam. Here we have the manual. It comes with the Scepter screwdriver, which is awesome. Looks like a display port cable and a screw for the bottom stand. That's pretty nice. Then you have the cable to plug into the converter right here. And right here, there's the converter, the power box. And then we have the stand, which is a new style stand from Scepter. It's actually all metal right here. It's got C27 printer right there. Pretty dang premium. And this is the height adjustability. Pretty minimalistic, clean, but solid metal right there. I like it. And this literally just looks like a vase mount which is pretty cool. Continuing on, this is the bottom plate or the bottom feet. And this entire thing again is all metal. Scepter always does a great job with their stands. They're always a little bit minimalistic, which I like. So what we're gonna do is just place that in there. And then you got a thumb screw right on the bottom here, flip that up and you just turn it to tighten it up. And that's all you gotta do. This is a high quality screw. So you'll just need your thumbs. You won't need a screwdriver. And that's really cool. Now, it also has this cool little thing back here. It's got a little hole there, so you can actually route like your mouse cable through that or any other cable, maybe your keyboard cable. But overall, I like the stand. All right, so after looking at the manual for a little bit, actually, this is the entire stand and it just snaps into the back and I think I think you may screw it in on the back of the monitor. And then this is actually a vase mount, which then screws into the back of the monitor because the monitor does not have an integrated vase mount, it seems, and this is actually the vase mount. So you're actually gonna put this in the back of the monitor if you wanna vase mount it, and then you screw the vase mount into this, which is very interesting. It's the first time we've ever seen that before, but it's nice that they include that. All right, now as well as this, you get another little thumb screw in there, and this is a cable management piece, which is nice. You just snap it right on there, and then you can manage cables by putting them through that. Really nice. All right, but let's get to the main thing, the monitor itself. And there it is. I really like the back. I'm actually getting some Samsung Odyssey G5 vibes from this. This is a curved monitor. I think it's a 1500R curve. All right, now it's all wrapped in plastic. It looks like they have a new menu system down here, which is really cool. Two HDMI 2.0s, two DisplayPort 1.4s, and an audio out. But to get this hooked up, we're gonna do it with this sitting on here. So we're just gonna cut into that plastic. That slides right in there. And then we literally just use the thumb screw to then screw this in. All right, now taking it off. Let's undo this right here. Wow, the back actually looks really good. This is probably the best looking scepter monitor from the back that they've made. I mean, really, really nice. Overall, it feels super solid. Actually, more solid than something like an LG, which I love them, but sometimes creak a little bit when you move them. This feels very high quality. You have that menu system down there with four buttons and then a middle button, which is very interesting. And obviously you can see two speakers right here. I don't know how good those are gonna be. All right, now let's remove this plastic. And yeah, right away, this actually looks really good. The way they have these accent pieces right here, which actually have actually have a feeling to them. Stand looks really nice with it. It's a 1500R curve, so it's nothing crazy like the Odyssey, but the up and down movement feels really, really good. The vertical adjustment, you have tilt, which again, actually feels really good. These, this thing feels super, super solid. Again, really, really sturdy. I don't think there is, there is actually swivel, which is pretty cool. So there's no rotation, there's vertical, tilt, and rotation. So that's actually, not rotation, swivel. But yeah, that's actually really good. All right, but now that it's unboxed, let's get the first initial impressions with gaming on it, and then we're gonna do a ghosting test. All right, guys, now it's all set up. Let's turn this thing on and see how good it is. Now, again, we're going under and behind with that new Scepter menu system. And there we go. Right away, it looks pretty dang good. The red, yeah, that looks pretty good. Obviously, we're gonna have to change some. Do keep in mind, we got a lot of lights on right now. But yeah, let's go right into the setting. All right, now I will say this is a like 10x better um, controls than before with the Scepter menu system. Looks like the menu system is pretty much the same, but the controls are way better. All right, let's go right down to system. Overdrive is on medium, high, off, low. We're just gonna keep that on medium. We're gonna turn FreeSync on. Oh wow, this actually has a backlight. It actually has RGB. It's pretty bright, 
probably the brightest I've seen uh, for backlight on a monitor. But again, it's kind of gimmicky because it's never even gonna reach the wall. Uh, although we will test that and we'll have it in the full review. So definitely subscribe below if you haven't already subscribed for the full review. All right, so continuing on, this does have volume. We're gonna turn that all the way up. And then we're gonna go back in here. We're gonna go to picture. So we have it on standard right now. We're gonna put it, there's RTS, FPS, eco, movie, user. So we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go back to user. And then we're gonna go up to backlight. And we're gonna turn that all the way up to get all of those 400 nits. Uh, which yeah, it looks about like 400 nits. This also has motion picture response time, which is pretty dang cool. But yeah, overall, those should be the settings. Now we're gonna go in to NVIDIA control panel. All right, now that we're in NVIDIA control panel, we're gonna go to use NVIDIA color and see if this thing, and it can't, it can output 10 bits of color. So this is either a 10 bit native panel, which I highly doubt, but it's probably eight bit plus frame rate control to output 10 bits of color which is really good. All right, but now what we're gonna do is launch up some Warzone and see how this thing games. All right, guys, let's test out the speakers really quick. That is at full volume. They aren't the best, but actually they're louder than some other ones, so it's nice to have them. We're gonna keep them pretty low though today. Let's jump right into a game. All right, loading in, obviously 165 hertz. Pretty standard at this point. A lot of monitors are getting 165 hertz, but yeah, it's smooth. Um, yeah, it's really smooth. It looks good. I love the brightness. A lot of VA panels recently, they just don't have that brightness. And this one actually has it. The colors look vibrant. It looks really good. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised. I wasn't expecting a Scepter monitor to look this good. I typically, I really love LGs. You guys know that, but this one is surprisingly good. Now the curve is nothing crazy, but it adds a little bit of immersion. Um, however, especially if you're gonna do like a dual monitor setup or a triple monitor setup, it's definitely gonna help with that. But yeah, overall the colors look really good actually. Um, and I'm really digging the brightness. That's a huge thing with this, especially being a VA panel, uh, saving a little bit of money compared to an IPS and you're getting um, much better black levels, much better black levels. So, but yeah, actually a, a very pretty screen. Right off the bat, I'm not noticing really any screen tearing at all, which is really good. Now you can definitely see a little bit of ghosting, but every VA panel is gonna have that. It does not impede gameplay, even in something fast paced like Warzone. But yeah, overall really impressed with the gameplay feeling. So yeah, overall gaming on it is pretty dang cool. But now let's do the ghosting test. Cause this is a VA panel, it's gonna have ghosting. We're gonna test the different overdrive settings and see which one is the best for you guys. All right, so testing out the ghosting, let's go to the different overdrive settings. We're currently on medium. We're gonna go to off. All right, so after looking at all of those, the best one to use is the highest one. That one has the least amount of ghosting and I don't see any noticeable pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting. So that's one I would go with. But yeah, this is a VA panel. There's definitely going to be some ghosting. But again, if you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys. But yeah, definitely subscribe to my channel. Check out the full review if you guys want to pick up this thing or if you're interested in it. But this was Type Z Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.